What's up guys? My name is Yuan Lund and today I'm checking out something that I've been looking forward to for a long time now. And that's the creation of the unholy alliance between Audiority and Clearton. Namely the virtual version of the ultimate death metal pedal, the Grindstein. So for this demo, I'm gonna go through the features of the plugin. I'm also gonna show you how I got the tones from the playthrough that you just heard. I hope you liked it. And I'm also gonna compare it to the real thing. So sit back, enjoy, and let's check it out. So I have my session loaded up here. And starting off, we have two DI guitars, one left and one right. And without the pedal engaged, they sound like this. Pretty kick-ass, right? <laughs> And after that, we have program bass and program drums. The bass is programmed with Eurobass 2 from Submission Audio. And the only processing made to that one is some minor EQ moves and some limiting for volume wise. Now, drums are programmed with Tune Track Easy Drummer 2, the Will Putney Modern Metal suit with uh, just a standard preset loaded up. And the only processing made to that one is also some limiting for handling of some transients. And I have the flat line on that one, and that's an awesome plugin for just controlling the overall volume and controlling the transits of drums. So you have to check that out. And, and the bass and drums sound like this together. Pretty sick sound, if I can say so myself. Uh, nice, short, snappy kit, perfect for a death metal song. And this nice grindy bass as well to hold the low end intact. Yeah, and when it comes to the mix of the playthrough, I have an instance of the Grindstein on both left and right guitar. Uh, the settings I will go through a bit later. And on the guitar bus, I have an instance of uh, BX Console SSL 4000E from Plugin Alliance. And the only thing that that does is some uh, low cut at around 100 hertz. That's it for that one. And next up, we have a FabFilter Pro Q3, which just takes care of some muddiness uh, around the mid frequencies. And last but not least, I have my favorite EQ for guitar, the Mag EQ4. And the only thing that that does is some adding some air at around uh, 20 hertz, about five decibels, and that's pretty much it. And we can check out the master channel here, nothing crazy going on. And uh, the mix tool here is just to reduce some gain for some headroom. And that goes into uh, the BX console SSL 4000E, uh, which have a low pass at around 35 to take care of some rumble. And uh, have a high shelf at around five decibels and a low boost at around 170 Hertz, about three decibels. And next up is the BX Townhouse Bus Compressor. It has a ratio at 4 to 1 and 1 millisecond attack and outer release. So it gives you about maybe 4 decibels of gain reduction, so nothing crazy. And after that, I have my Pug Tech EQ from Waves. Uh, boosts 1 decibel at uh, 100 Hz for some extra beef. And also a boost about two decibels at 
10k for some air. And after that, the bulk of the volume is taken care of by the flatline plugin from Submission Audio, which I mentioned earlier on the drums. It's an awesome clipper limiter, uh, which uh, allows you to get maximum gain without uh, destroying the material, basically. And it's, it's awesome. So you have to check it out. So that's it for the master channel. So let's check out the grindstone pedal and the features that it has. Uh, so first off, when you load it up, it looks like this by default. And it's pretty much the same look as the original pedal with some minor tweaks. Uh, I'll get back to this page in a minute. So let's just uh, focus on this area down here. First off, you have an input gain here. And next up is the gate, which also has a boost built into it. And it's the Schnauzer gate from Clearton and also based off an original pedal, an uh, actual pedal that uh, they've collaborated with Audiority to make a VST version of it. And it's an awesome gate, a simple control, you just to turn this threshold until you're satisfied with the, how much the gate uh, reacts. And this boost uh, is just as simple as turning it uh, as much as you want and really helps to add some um, saturation into the pedal itself. So it's awesome. Uh, boost on and off here and gate on and off here. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the boost section of this pedal when you can hear some audio examples. Uh, next up is the Grindstein itself uh, with a lot of different uh, tone variations you can get by turning these knobs in collaboration with each other. So I'm just uh, going to go through them in a while and you can hear how each knob affects the sound, basically. After that, you have an EQ section, also a brand new VST pedal, and it's called the Fleisch with a killer GUI, which gives you pretty much nightmares just by looking at it. It had some um, specific EQ frequencies that is boosted or cut depending on which ones uh, you use here, and uh, I'm also going to go through them. Uh, cab section here is basically a bunch of IRs that uh, Christian Kola had made uh, to suit uh, this pedal, and it sound really awesome. You can get uh, huge variations of tones as well by just flicking through these IRs here. Next up is the output section, and up here you have a preset that's also made by uh, Christian Kola. And as a really nice starting point, if you're looking for like some help to get you close to the tones that uh, you like, just flick through this and uh, then adapt the tones to your liking and the gear that you're using, basically. All right, so let's check out some audio examples and what the different knobs do to the sound. Uh, starting off with the gate, first of all, I have the pedal set up like this. Uh, the EQ is set like this and the cab is chosen is the modern gore. But moving over to the gate, uh, I'm just gonna mute these and we'll hear the guitar in solo. So let's check it out. I have the boost disengaged and I'm gonna engage it and then increase the boost. You can hear how that sounds. So here we go. As you can hear, really adds uh, some meat into the pedal. It sounds really kick-ass. Uh, it increases the volume, of course, so that can be a, a fooled notice that it sounds better. Uh, I think it adds uh, some nice saturation and really uh, cranks up the, the gain on the pedal. So it sounds really great. Moving over to the Grindstein, I'm going to play through it and twist some knobs so you can hear what they do to the sound. Uh, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, uh, besides a couple of them that I'm going to go through right now. And uh, mainly it's uh, this section up here, uh, the grind, is uh, basically how much of the Swedish death metal chainsaw sound you want, from 0% up to 100. Uh, and that in conjunction with the mid-cut 
it really comes in handy because if you crank the grind all the way to up to 100, you get um, some uh, mid high frequencies that could be a bit abrasive. Uh, but then you have this mid cut knob here, which uh, basically controls those frequencies uh, in different amounts, uh, depending on how much you want it to be cut, basically. And the mix knob here uh, is all the way from zero to 100, where 100 is full on grindstein. Uh, if you turn it over to zero, you get a basically a real clean modern metal tone uh, without any of the death metal grind uh, engage basically uh, but you can tailor that to your liking so that's an awesome uh, tool to have the face flip over here you can use that as a nice creative tool uh, it screws up the sound in a really cool way so i urge you to check that out but i'm gonna flick that over so you can hear how that sound and the fx loop down here allows you to disengage the bottom shaker part of the pedal uh, and that uh, pretty much allows you to uh, use any other favorite amp sim of your choice or another pedal uh, in that case um, and use those in parallel with each other. Uh, it's a pretty easy setup. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can check out the manual and they have a setup there which uh, shows you how to set it up in Cubase, but you can use that setup in any other DLW basically. Uh, so check that out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's hear it in action. I'm going to play through it and push some knobs so you can hear what they do to the sound. So let's check it out. This sounds really sick. I love this pedal. Next up is the EQ section. I'm gonna keep the settings start like this and flick through some of the EQs here so you can hear how they sound. So I'm just gonna play through it, that one as well. So let's check it out. <laughs>
Yeah, so really huge uh, variations of tones you can get out of it by using the EQ here as well. And it's a simple on and off button down here as well. Moving over to the cab section, I'm going to play through it and uh, flick through the different IRs so you can hear how they sound. And of course, you can turn them off if you want to use your own IR or if you have a third party IR of your choice that you really like. Uh, but I assure you, these are really, really good and tailored to this pedal. So I encourage you to try them out. And uh, so let's hear how they sound. Starting off with the modern gore, and I'm going to work my way through. Sounds really sick, all of them. Different tones, uh, of course, depending on what IR you choose. Uh, and of course, if you flick through these and uh, go back to the EQ or to the grind settings uh, in general, of course, you can get uh, huge variations of uh, tones here. But that's for another video. <laughs> yeah, so let's see how it stacks up to the original pedal. All right, so let's compare the pedal to the real thing. I have uh, my original. Grindstein pedal here. It goes straight from my interface and using one of the DI tracks uh, to trigger the pedal. And on the computer here, I have an instance of the Grindstein pedal engaged right here with the same settings that we went over just a couple of seconds ago. The settings are identical in that I have the gate engaged here, I have the gate engaged here, and the boost as well. The Grindstein uh, on the pedal channel, so to speak, is of course disengaged, but the EQ is exactly the same and I'm using the same cab as well, as you can see here. So I'm gonna switch back and forth from the real pedal over to the VST model and vice versa and see what toms we can get out of the real one versus the modded version. So I'm going to close this window here since that is only for the cab section and the boost. I'm going to focus on the knobs on the pedal itself. Uh, but on this one, I'm going to go over to the Grindstein uh, section and turn some knobs on this one. Uh, it's set up, as you can see, pretty much the same way on the actual pedal as on the uh, virtual version. So I'm going to start off with having the actual pedal on and I'm going to switch back to the VST version and we'll see how it sounds. So let's go. <laughs>
So as you can hear, they both sound really kick-ass. And even though the settings were pretty much exactly the same on certain sections, they have different tonalities. And that's, of course, because one of them is a real pedal and the other one is a VST model. But it was great fun to compare them both. Yeah, so there you have it. In my opinion, the sickest death metal pedal that's out there, now in virtual form, for you to create some nasty tones. I hope you like my demo, and if you want to support me, please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I release a new video, and until then, I'll see you later.